you want to learn how to trade stocks and cryptocurrency, join our community of traders. Go to richpicksdaily.com and find the next 10 bagger. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Aiden Mills, the CEO of Northstar Clean Technologies. How are you doing today, Aiden? Great, Rich. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Very excited to learn more about your company today, Symbol Roof, R-O-O-F. And I have a few questions for you today. First sure. of all, I'd like to ask, Northstar Clean Technologies is a clean technology company dedicated to the processing, extraction, and recovery of single-use asphalt shingles. Can you tell us a little bit more about the company? Sure, so um, our company basically takes single-use asphalt tiles and reprocesses them into their individual component parts to a sales quality specification. And so let's step back and, and talk about what a, what a asphalt shingle looks like. So a shingle tile is basically made up of three different things. So 50% of the tile is sand, 25% is fiber. The older tiles, the fiber will be paper, and the newer tiles, the fiber is fiberglass. And then the remaining 25% is, uh, is asphalt oil. So basically, we have developed a completely proprietary technology. We believe we are the only people in the world who have the technology to be able to split that shingle up into its individual component parts. Wow, that's incredible. Now, what fueled the company's decision to focus primarily on solving the asphalt shingle waste problem? Well, look, if you, if you, think, about, uh, if you think about the industry of repurposing waste and ba either back into you know, products that can be used or products that can be you know, used in heat or, uh, or mobility, et cetera, um, the, uh, the technology emerged about 10 years ago from Lafarge. Lafarge decided to, to, to look at, at this because essentially because of, if you think, as we said before, 25% of everything that's going into a landfill as a shingle tile is asphalt oil. So Lafarge, who were a major paving company, decided, let's have a look at this. They took it to a point whereby um, they presented the capital. Um, Lafarge decided not to progress it. And the two of the founders that were involved in our company thought, look, this is a really good idea. So they took the technology from Lafarge uh, with, you know, un under, uh, under agreement with Lafarge. And we'll talk a little bit about that, what that actually means with respect to sales contracts later. But, uh, but yeah, so they took that technology out um, and started to develop it. And so that was about 10 years ago. About five years ago, they built the, uh, they formed the Empower company um, and started to develop the site that we have uh, at Delta. And so there's a single site at Delta and people are like, well, is this just like a, a small technology play? Is this just focused? No, the market size for this essentially is the whole of North America. Wow. So when you look at what's happening with asphalt shingles today, there are, and, and you look at the figures in the US, for last year, 13 million tons of asphalt shingle tiles came off roofs to be reprocessed. One million of that got is kind of ground up and put in the road. So no matter where you live, if you Google, you know, recycled asphalt shingles, there's companies all across North America that do this. And what they do is they take the tile, they grind it up, and then they put it back in, uh, in roads. So that represents 1 million tons. So 12 million tons actually goes into landfill. Wow. And, and let me tell you what 12 million tons kind of means in, in real money. So 12 million tons of asphalt shingles is about 3 million tons of asphalt oil. And 3 million tons of asphalt oil is more than 18 million barrels of oil. Wow. And that is equivalent to one, year, one day's worth of US oil production. So the problem that we're trying to solve essentially is that in theory, in the 1st of January, all of US production pouring into landfill. That's what we're trying to address. So 
what exactly, and you may have touched on this, is the zero waste trend and what impact does it have on North Star's business? Well, if you think about what we're trying to do with respect to diversion, recycling, the circular economy, there's three major trends that are going on. Number one, if you look at, for example, if you look at the, at the Clean Cities objective, clean cities are trying to reduce what can go into landfill as much as they possibly can. Some have set targets of you know, 50% reduction by, by, by 2030. So what that means for us is we literally can go to every municipality and say, give us all your asphalt shingle tiles and you can stop those going into landfill. And we don't produce it, we don't um, repurpose it and give them a really nasty byproduct back. We take it all. So wow. in one single shot, we can literally take all the asphalt shingles as part of the, as part of the uh, zero waste. The second thing is ESG. So if you think about the asphalt that comes out the back end of, uh, of our process, it is literally the only green asphalt in North America. So if you think about a green product that is part of a circular economy in ESG, that's fantastic. And that's what we do. And the third thing is the circular economy. So if you think about a lot of the trends, so let's take plastics, for example, you know, plastics get re recycled, ground up, repurposed and back into plastic pellets that go back into making plastic bottles, for example. And that's exactly what we do. So if you think about something that is literally straight down the fairway of, of uh, waste repurposing, circular economy and ESG support, those three big things, this company is right down the fairway. That's fantastic. You guys are doing some great work. What do you believe is the market opportunity for North Star? Well, look, I think the market opportunity is if you look at the size of our facility, and we'll talk a little bit about our expansion facility in a minute, but if you look at the size of our expansion facility, it can probably process about 150 to, to 200 tons a day of asphalt shingles. Wow. The market size that is good for that is any city that has over a million people. And so that generates enough asphalt shingles coming off roofs, uh, new roofs being purposed at demolition waste, et cetera, that we can build one plant. And if you think about uh, a city like, let's take Toronto. So, our, our first expansion plant, we'll chat about it later, but our first expansion plant will be based in Calgary. So you think the size of Calgary, you know, over a million people. Well, if you go to somewhere like Toronto, that can have four of our facilities. Wow. If you go to LA, it could have 10 of our facilities. As long as it's over a million people, that number of tons generates enough for one of our plants. So that, so the, the, the market size, uh, you know, every CEO will say the market size is unparalleled. Uh, the market size for this plant, in my opinion, across North America is absolutely huge. That's incredible. Now, what sets North Star apart from the other companies in the space? Well, look, there's a number of different companies that we would call um, peers in the space because they're taking a waste product and then they're, as part of a kind of a circular economy thing, they're generating stuff that comes like the back end. We're the only people that can do it for asphalt shingle tiles. We're really, really focused. So I actually get the question quite often, well, look, this technology looks great. Can you do, could you put this into it? Could you put that into it? And I'm like, ah, you know, we absolutely have to be ruthlessly focused on the execution plan. We have 12 million tons in the US and one and a half million tons in Canada to just to, 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 to secure. So the first thing we are is very focused. And the second thing we are is, this isn't a 2030 ESG plan. This is ready now. Our Delta facility, the Empire facility in Delta, is targeted to move to steady state production in one queue. Revenue production, you know, around about the same time as well. So this isn't the difference between us, I think, and a number of our peers is they have developing technologies. We literally have a technology that is ready to go. That's incredible. Now, I know that North Star expects to reach commercial production and begin generating revenue early next year. Can you right. tell us about the company's multiple revenue streams and near-term revenue projections? Sure. So, so the first step in this is we, so I, I talked a little bit earlier about, about the technology being improved. So we, we have 
this month ran commissioning runs at the at the facility in Delta. And commissioning runs are really important because they do two things. They number one, prove that the technology works. So, you know, out the back end of the plant, we get, we got um, aggregate and fiber and oil. So we know that the technology works. And now also during that process, we identified the steps that we need to take to get to steady state production. So we're very confident that will happen in, uh, in Q1 next year. And if you look at the revenue for the, for the plant, there's really five buckets of revenue that comes in from the plant perspective. So the first thing is, if you're if you take some asphalt shingle tiles in off off a roof in Vancouver and you drive it to the landfill, you have to pay a tipping fee of about 130 bucks a ton for every ton of asphalt shingle that you put in to the landfill. So our Delta facility is five kilometers away from the. Vancouver Metro landfill. So the first part of the business model is we get the roofers to turn right to our facility instead of left to, to, to the Metro facility. And when they come to us, now we'll give them an advantage rate. So we will have a landfill tax that is lower, a tipping fee that is lower um, than the Vancouver Metro landfill. And so that's the first revenue stream. And when we bring the trucks in, we've got kind of three things to do. Number one, we offer the guy who runs the company an incentive, you know, 20 bucks a ton of advantage to come to us. Number two, it's not like a landfill queue. We can literally unload the trucks within 15 minutes. And the third thing is we might even give the truck driver a cup of coffee and, okay. uh, and make sure that whenever he turns up, he gets a cup of coffee and a bacon roll or whatever uh, when, he, when he drops the stuff off. So that's the first kind of part of the revenue model and part of the, you know, marketing marketing stream to, to, to bring that in. And then you think, so then we, we process and then out the back end drops uh, fiber and, and aggregate, so sand. And, and that's fine because that can go into local markets. Now, are, are any sand buyers going to give us uh, a huge premium because it's, uh, because it's green? Uh, probably not. But we know that there's a local market. There's no supply issues or no demand issues. So we can take those products into the local market. But the third thing out the back end that's really important is asphalt. So if you think about asphalt, think about the guys who use asphalt for, for the roads, whether it's Lafarge or Colas or Dow Corning all across North America. I mean, today, when they show their, their production graph or their, or their usage graph, it's like, you know, here's the usage graph of their, of their asphalt, of their, their black line of asphalt. Suddenly, as we build our plants, we start to introduce a green recycled line. Now, I'm not going to tell you that that's necessarily going to be three times the price of asphalt, like, like uh, jet fuel, green jet fuel is versus jet fuel. But we believe that there's upside for that because we believe there will be a green premium, a green premium above market for asphalt coming out the back end. And then the fifth, the fifth part of the model is what we're studying now, and that's what is the CO2 footprint of our, of our facility? We believe because of the way that we're processing it, we have a CO2 footprint that is significantly lower than the virgin production of asphalt, you know, at the back end of refineries and from aggregate, et cetera. So we believe there'll be a carbon credit element. And we know, we certainly know, and the carbon credit element depends, it often depends on the jurisdiction. It depends on the state law or the provincial law, you know, what the federal regulations are for measuring the carbon credit. But I can tell you for sure that our view is that we will use less carbon to generate a ton of asphalt versus virgin production. So as we run every hour, we will have carbon benefit uh, with, with our production model. So we still have to do a lot of work about how to monetize that, but that's the fifth revenue model that sits over the whole top of, of the process. So you have the tipping fee in the front end, three products in the back end, and then the carbon benefit that sits on top. Aiden, one of the things that we really look for here at Rich TV Live is companies that are well-funded, well-capitalized with little to no debt. Can you talk a little bit about your financial structure? Sure. So look, this is a thing that I think is really exciting about, about the company. As I said earlier, we, um, so we IPO'd on the 13th of July. That generated about you know 12.2 million of, of a raise and all equity raise, so all retail equity, um, no institutional investors in as yet. So all people like the like the community the community you serve. 
So let's talk about where we are now. So at the end of uh, at, the, at the end of the last quarter, the last quarterly results, we had ten million dollars worth of cash on the balance sheet. Right. Out of that, um, about 0.9 of that was uh, was debt, but that's a credit revolver to a local friendly uh, friendly Van, Van, Vancouver uh, Vancouver Finance Institution. So so not term debt. But if you step back and you think about our capital spend, so you know, it's probably going to cost us around about a million dollars to get the Empower facility up and running. Um, we have, as we talked about, we have the engineering and the, the RFP to be done uh, for the expansion plant. Um, and we obviously have the development of the business to, to, to get ready for that. But Rich, there's nothing in our capital structure at all at the minute from government subsidies. So we have Wellington DuPont, uh, uh, who are our government and public affairs advisor based in Ottawa, engaging along with us, engaging the federal government, provincial governments and municipal governments about the level of support that they could be able to provide to something that is literally right down the fairway of the green infrastructure play. So none of that 10 million worth of cash is any, of the, is any government funding as yet. So that's one of the big things to look forward to that we're, we're, we're driving forward. The second thing is there is no term debt in the structure. So we literally have no debt in that $10 million worth of cash that is, that's term debt that we will need to build this facility, these facilities out. So the expansion plant uh, capacity, um, as I said, 150 to 200 tons a day, but also probably costs about 10 million bucks to build. So this isn't a, a renewable ESG plant that's going to cost 100 million or 150 million. Every single facility can be put in these cities and they cost $10 million. So the, 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 the plan that we have after the Calgary, you know, Calgary facility in, uh, in Q3 is to think about, you know, potentially between then and the end of 2020, uh, then and the end of 2023, six plants. So a plant per quarter. And so that's a $60 million kind of build program. And we think that the equity that needs to go into that, it might only need to be like 25%, that we may have 25% government subsidies wow. and 50% green term debt, which of course is advantaged because every hour we run, we generate a carbon credit. Wow, you guys got it all figured out. Now, the company already has a number of supply and offtake agreements in place. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Sure. So, so the team that, uh, that developed this, you know, and five years ago, as they, uh, the, sorry, the first agreement with Lafarge, of course, was, look, take the technology, you're good, you guys are good to run with it. But for the first three plants in Western Canada, Lafarge have an offtake agreement that we sell all the production to, to them. Now, that's currently priced at, what I would describe as a, a, a what I would describe as a commissioning contract level. So five years ago, when the fires were talking to, to the Empire, the, the, the finders, they were like, okay, so you're not sure when you're going to produce, you're not quite sure what the quality is going to be, et cetera, et cetera. Now we've got and so priced, you know, priced at 300 bucks a ton. So now we're in a position whereby we have quality, we know the quality is good. We have, um, you know, we were clear about when we're going to be producing. We have a good idea about how much we'll be producing. So it can fit perfectly into their offtake plans. So our discussions with Lafarge are now, well, look, this should reflect more, more of a market price. And so if you took the market price, for example, in Vancouver today, it's probably in the kind of six to $700 a ton. So, you know, Asphalt pricing, it depends on, it's seasonal. It also depends on oil price. But again, we have the only green asphalt in North America. So we believe that there's a, that there's a strong market capability uh, and, and market pricing dynamic for, uh, for, for our asphalt too. So that's the, that's the discussion ongoing with, with uh, Lafarge. So we have three plants in Western Canada planned. For the rest of North America, we've now started discussions with both Lafarge and some, some of the other providers who take asphalt um, to, 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 to talk to, including not only paving guys, but if this is a perfect circular economy play, it will go back into roofing. So, you know, we're talking to a number of roofers as well about what those, uh, what those offtake agreements could look like. From, from, a, from a debt perspective, we'll talk about a little bit about the capital structure in a, in a minute. 
But, but from a debt perspective, we believe if we have supply in the front end and we have an offtake agreement for the majority coming out the back end from an asphalt perspective, that you could fund that with ordinary debt today and green debt on top of it will be even better because we know that there's the CO2 benefit. Now, here at Rich TV Live, we love to understand the fundamentals of the company. We also like to understand the management team behind the company. Yep. The North Star's leadership team has an impressive 280 years of combined operational and capital markets experience. Can you tell us how this contributes to the success of the company? Well, look, I, I mean, I, I like the I like the 280 years, but to, to me, actually, that could be 280 years of of uh, of not good experience. So, so let me tell you why I think our team really works. Sure. So, if you think about the team, it's really made up of three. The leadership team is made up of three constituent parts. The first thing, that, and it's absolutely it's absolutely crucial is, you know, we have the founders of the company and we have the founders of the technology. So the people who literally can walk up to a pump, put their hand on it and go, hmm, I think this should be running better, you know, so so they know exactly how to produce the products at the back end. It was their idea and they're they're hugely vested. The, the, the two of the founders um, own 5% of the company each. And so absolutely locked into the success, success going forward. Also part of the management team is some of the guys that did the capital raise. So Empower was a, was a standalone company. North Star then acquired Empower and it was North Star and the leadership team of North Star that took that did the, the capital raise. So IPO'd in the 13th of, uh, of July, $12.2 million worth of equity cash came into the company to drive the, the next steps forward. And so that team is still in place as well. And I joined on the 12th of July. So look, my background is, you know, 20 years of BP, 10 years in, in operations and engineering, 10 years in commodity marketing and trading um, and, and offtake agreements, just like we, we talked about. And then the last 10 years, both at, uh, at Husky and at Goldman um, and at Meg, you know, working on the strategic development of businesses. And, and so my, me joining enables the kind of third level to be added to the leadership team about how do we drive this business forward and commercialize it. So if you step back, ignoring the 280 years, the three really important component parts of the operation and engineering and the understanding, the financing and how we're helping with the capital markets and driving the strategic business forward, that's what the leadership team has today. I love it. And what should investors watch out for from North Star Clean Technologies in the coming months, years? Well, look, the first thing we talked about earlier was the Empower plant in Delta. So it should move to steady state production in, in, in Q1. So that steady state production to me is probably about you know 50 to 100 tons a day. The other thing, and that we're going to be announcing this quite shortly, the other thing we've done is we've done an RFP process for uh, a Calgary engineering company. We had three companies that bid for it. Um, we're just about to finalize the agreement with one of those companies, and that's to build the expansion plant. So the plant in Delta is an excellent plant, but it's an entrepreneur plant. It's not a fully engineered plant. And that's what the, the tech, that's what the engineering provider will do. Um, and, and that detailed design for the expansion plants will be ready probably about the end of Q1. That's, that's our target. So once that's ready, then essentially we can start the rollout program. So the rollout program will start with Calgary. So we will likely start, um, we'll likely start construction in Q3. We think the from kind of first sod being turned to, to commissioning, it's probably about six months. So in theory, Investors can expect the first expansion plant online by the end of next year. Um, and that expansion plant, that's 150 to 200 tons a day. So that's actually an important point as well with respect to, with respect to ESG, et cetera, and, and, um, and repurposing plants for this new technology. Like this is ready to go, but the scale up risk from the current plant to the, to the expansion plant is like times two. So I'm not saying to people, hey, listen, invest in us. I have something on my on like an, on a bench in a laboratory, and the risk you're taking is a times 50 or a times 100 scale. This isn't ready in 2020. We literally have a scale up that is two to three times ready by the end of next year. 
The only, the other thing that we, we we chatted about earlier quickly was the uh, was the CO two benefit. The CO two study should be ready again within this quarter to be able to to talk about what we think the benefit is of both the Empower plant and Delta, but also the expansion plant. Now, to be fair, we'll know more about the expansion plant carbon footprint whenever the detailed engineering is done by the end of Q one. But indicatively, we should know both of those figures. Uh, it, you know, this this quarter this year. Uh, and so that's something for people to look forward to because we'll be able to actually say, not only do we believe we're green, but here are the indicative figures that uh, that, that, that demonstrate that from, from a carbon perspective. Finally, how can investors get in touch with North Star? So uh, let me just <laughs> have, have a quick look at our, at our IR deck. So one of the best ways to get in, in contact with us from an IR perspective uh, is, is to talk to Kin Communications. They are our uh, investor relations support team. So that is Ruth at kincommunications.com. Our director of capital markets at, uh, at Northstar is Carson Sadon. He's Carson at northstarcleantech.com. And as the CEO, I'll give out my contact as well, which is Aiden at northstarcleantech.com as well. Fantastic. Now, I must remind everyone who's watching these videos that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. In saying that, I do believe this is a company that's undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. Thank you so much for joining us today. The CEO of Northstar Clean Technologies, Aiden Mills. Hey, Rich, thanks very much. Thanks for your time. Always a pleasure. Love to invite you back on the show. If you ever have any big breaking news or anything you want to talk about, uh, with our community. We'd love to invite you back. Thank you for your time today, Aiden Mills. And thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching everybody and have a nice day.